What is this chest? What the heck? There's a ton of guns. I'm so lucky. These Minecraft speedruns are absolutely terrible. Ah! And incredibly fake. So let's take a closer look. This runner spawns in a desert, conveniently right next to a tree. But pay attention to what happens when he walks towards it. Did you notice it? The runner walked over a pressure plate that was seemingly disguised as sand. And after chopping the tree, he heads back in this direction, where a hole in the ground has suddenly opened up to reveal buried treasure, likely triggered by the sand pressure plate. In the chest, there is all the normal buried treasure loot, but also a flint and steel and obsidian, which are not possible spawns. You'll also notice the nine wool that was evidently already Already in the runner's inventory before the run started. Just enough for him to craft three beds to kill the dragon later on. After looting the chest, the runner uses his newly obtained obsidian to build a portal and enter the nether, where... Yeah. There was clearly a not-so-clever cut in the recording, and he's suddenly in a fortress. There's also now this random Steve head in the corner, but we'll get to that in a second. The runner heads through the fortress and right to a blaze spawner, where there are a ton of blazes. Way more than would have spawned in this short of time, confirming that this world was played on before the run, if you couldn't already tell. While fighting the blazes, if you look really closely, you'll see po ocean particles around the runner, fire resistance particles to be specific, which explains the random Steve face. The runner must have retextured the potion effect graphic that's normally in this spot into a Steve face to throw people off and to hide the fact that he secretly gave himself fire resistance, similar to the sand pressure plate from earlier. Why couldn't he have done a better job? I have no idea. Next, the runner heads back to the overworld before digging straight down and right into the stronghold, where he doesn't get the achievement that you'd normally get, showing that he's already been in this stronghold. He enters the end and everything seems normal, but after messing up with his beds, the Steve head reappears and the runner kills the dragon in one hit. So instead of fire resistance, he must now have like strength 1000. Nice. This next runner spawns right into a village, where he finds an iron golem trapped in one of the structures, somewhere where it could not spawn naturally. The golem also doesn't fight back when being hit by the runner, confirming that it was created by him. When the golem is finally killed, it drops iron like normal, but the iron on the ground is split into two separate piles instead of being stacked into one, and it totals to eight ingots, more than a golem could naturally drop, suggesting that the runner planted one of these stacks himself. The runner loots a blacksmith next, where the chest's loot looks pretty realistic, but its gold chestplate and flint and steel are not possible spawns. Also, if you take a close look at some of these villagers, they have a little brown pouch on their clothes, something that, believe it or not, indicates that they've already been traded with. For what? I have no idea. The runner spots a ruined portal very close nearby, with a bane of arthropods gold sword in its chest. Remember this for later. He enters the nether, but pay close attention to the path he takes once there. He heads in a very intentional direction, seemingly following these specific blocks scattered throughout his path until he reaches a bastion. Wow. In the bastion, he finds a chest with two ender pearls and two blaze rods. Obviously not possible. It's still not quite enough though, so the runner kills some endermen, where mid-fight, his sword's durability resets just before breaking. He now has one additional pearl. Still not nearly enough to get him to the end, but the runner disregards this and heads back to his portal, passing by and ignoring another enderman on the way. Once back in the overworld, the the runner opens his F3 menu and follows his coordinates to a seemingly random location. Oh, and there's a shipwreck. Great. It contains a map that clearly shows nothing, but the runner pretends to follow it all the way until he mines straight down and into the stronghold. Oh, but don't miss how he also nonchalantly picked up some pearls on the way. Nice. That makes seven pearls and eight blaze rods somehow, which becomes eight eyes of ender. So 
somehow, allowing our runner friend to head right into the end, where he shreds down the dragon's health quite quickly with his Bane of Arthropod sword from earlier. But it seems like it's now enchanted with strength, considering how quickly he's able to kill the dragon, which makes for a pretty easy end to his run. By the way, thank you guys for 600,000 subscribers. Maybe now we can get to 700,000, please? Subscribe? This runner spawns very close to an igloo, where inside he finds its chest on the surface instead of hidden underground like it's supposed to be, full of the items an igloo would normally spawn with. But afterwards, he heads in a pretty specific direction where... Yeah. He broke this strangely placed dead bush here, which triggered this sand to fall and brings him right to a ruined portal. Definitely not orchestrated by himself. And luckily in the chest, there is the perfect amount of obsidian necessary to complete the portal. You'll also notice that it's now raining, something that cannot happen this soon in a new world, further confirming that this world had already been generated. Once in the nether, there are multiple blazes right next to the runner, despite him not being in a fortress, which is very suspicious. Next, he actually finds a fortress, but instead of going to the blaze spawner nearby, he follows the path into the fortress and stumbles upon a group of piglin in a hole that he clearly created himself. He throws a few gold at them and gets a couple ender pearls, not enough to get him to the end, but he's not gonna let that stop him. Instead, he returns to the overworld and just walks without any eyes of ender, instead just pretending to be doing something with his F3 menu. I'm not sure what. He continues walking until he reaches a very specific sunflower, which he mines directly under and right into the stronghold. Oh, and he suddenly has more ender pearls now, the perfect amount for him to enter the end, where he spawns in the middle of the main island on a large and clearly man-made obsidian platform, which just, that's not how that's supposed to happen. Okay, get this guy off my screen. This next runner spawns near a pillager outpost, where in the tower's bottom chest, there is obsidian and flint, both impossible spawns. This seems to be a trend with these fake speedrunners. They're just so lazy. There's also obsidian in the chest at the top of the structure alongside an iron axe. And coincidentally, the obsidian from these two chests adds up to 10, the exact amount needed to make a nether portal. I'm just gonna take a breather, I think. The runner leaves the tower and heads to the outpost's iron golem cage, where instead of one golem, there are three golems inside of it, none of which even try to fight back as he kills them. Oh, also, all three of the golems drop 12 iron E. Obviously, way more than they're supposed to. The runner now has everything he needs to build a portal and enter the nether, where he spawns right into a bastion. You really just can't get any more obvious than that. He then follows a specific path through the bastion until he spots what looks like the blaze spawner from a fortress, but is seemingly attached to the bastion. He kills a bunch of blazes before mining the spawner for some reason and almost dying to the last remaining blaze, after which he gets as far away as possible, thanks to these blocks here that were clearly placed by him. Next, he randomly goes out of his way to mine some gold and craft some golden apples, which will be particularly notable in a sec. The runner returns to the overworld despite not yet having any ender pearls, but that doesn't last long as he casually picks some up as he travels through the portal. Oh, and those golden apples from before are now notch apples. Also, thanks to some speedrunner magic like the pearls and everything else in this run. As you can see, the runner is now in a village where in the blacksmith's chest, he finds even more pearls alongside some iron gear, which grants him a ton of achievements, including ones he already unlocked earlier in the run, likely because he revoked all of his achievements before grabbing this fake loot in an attempt to hide that he had placed it all here himself, but it just blew up in his face by not only giving him the suit up achievement like he wanted, but also everything else. The runner starts heading to the stronghold until he reaches this odd divot in the ground, and then mines straight down right into the stronghold, but I'm sure you already guessed as much. In one of the stronghold chests, he finds even more ender pearls. <sighs> the remaining amount he needs to finish the portal and enter to the end, where somehow he has enough arrows to shoot for like three minutes straight and finally beat the dragon. Great work. 